Hi, everyone. Welcome to the fullest podcast. Today's guest is Caroline Shrink, who I'm so excited to interview. And she is a licensed funeral director and the founder of Down to Earth Funeral. Hi. Hi, from across the country. I know. <laughs> it's so wonderful that, you know, we've been able to connect through social media. And I think it was a while ago that we were connected and Finally, um, you know, we've had the opportunity to get to know each other a little more and to do this interview. So I'm really excited to talk to you about what you're up to and, and your work because it's so important. And, um, and yeah, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, thank you. It's, um, it's funny. You just mentioned, I mentioned my kid's age, which mentions my age and there's something that comes with getting older that isn't such a bad, like you get to share what you've been through with people who luckily, fortunately haven't been through what you've been through yet. And it's part of what I do and what drew me to this is that I'd been through some, you know, death and it's something that's going to happen to everyone. And, um, being prepared or being knowledgeable is something that, you're going to go through it anyway. So you might as well have the knowledge. Yeah, that it's so true. And I, um, I read about how your parents' death is how you came into the line of work that you're in and what you're doing. And I, I have only experienced the death of my grandparents and watching them, um, just, just what happened to them was horrible. I, I felt like, just in the hospital system, because really I'm so into natural foods and living holistically and, and just watching them deteriorate and then watching just how their um, quality of life diminished over time and to, in a way where I felt that they would have still had a lot more time if, um, you know, they didn't, if their children didn't choose the things that they um, chose for them which is interesting because for my family, because my grandparents are immigrants and parents and their siblings are immigrants, it was just an interesting transition and interesting to see how they dealt with things. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I just being in the industry that I'm in, I always just knew there's a different way. And what do I want for myself? Because watching my grandfather get buried and seeing what he was like before he passed and then what the open casket ceremony was like and what, you know, the formaldehyde and like just all that. And I, you know, it's, it's tradition here, I guess, but I just think that you, I always think of things and in a way where I know that there's another way. So what is the other way and how did someone like you come upon that um, and research that? Cause I think, someone like me, it's just like so depressing. I don't even want to think about it at the same time, but someone needs to do it and someone needs to share. And I've had a death doula on the show before, which I think is so important. Um, especially, you know, having just had a baby not that long ago. I mean, he's not has a baby and, um, knowing the importance of a doula, when someone comes into this world and understanding the importance when someone is transitioning out. Um, so I, I think the whole, whole, the holistic aspect of this transition is beautiful and important, just as important to educate ourselves in. So what I want to say is thank you for doing the work that you're doing. And I'm really excited to learn about how, um, yeah, how you came upon it. Even, you know, when you're grieving your parents' death, how do you also start looking into all this? Did you implement it during that time or was it afterwards? Something that um, you said about wishing that your grandparents had done things a different way, I think is was like a pivotal thing for me. Um, when my dad passed away 11 years ago, I took care of him when he was ill and he ended up dying of pneumonia from complications of which was a complication of Alzheimer's and I did everything I could to keep him alive I had a feeding tube and I 
I, I tried everything and it failed. He wasn't meant to live. And at his memorial, which I planned, I said to, um, I said to my uncle, my father, my sister, my mother's brother, I said, I did everything I could to keep him alive. And he said to me, he wouldn't have wanted that. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, all those walks after Thanksgiving dinner, that's what we talked about. I was like, nobody told me, like, nobody told me his wishes. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that. I, I, I wouldn't have done that. And I would have felt less guilty had I known that he didn't want that quality of life. And I think what happens with death of people that we love is that we impose what we think they would want for us. And we actually have to be selfless and think about what they would want. Because when you're older and you're sick and you're tired, sometimes you're just done. Yeah. And we want them there. And then our wanting them there makes them feel guilty of for leaving. The question is, it's really about a conversation and really like what does holistic mean? Holistic means the whole, the whole body, the whole earth. And it's about honesty and saying the fearful thing is what do you want and how can I honor what you want? And in honoring what your parents or your grandparents want, you're really honoring yourself because it's the biggest gift that they can give is to tell you what their wishes are. Mm -hmm. And it's really not that bad. It's like my new thing is something I don't want to say. I just say, I'm just like one, two, three, go. It's like getting a shot in your arm, yeah. like count to three and just say it. And I just say it. And what, once it's out there, it's out there. Mm -hmm and you've done your job. And I think that's what it is about death. It's really just saying, what, what, what do you want? What do you want me to do? How can, how can you give me instructions so that I will be armed with what I need to get through the worst five days of my life? Yeah. Um, and that's how I became funeral directors. When my dad died, I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old and they were still there the day after my dad yeah. died. Like they were still there. They still needed breakfast. They still needed to go to school. But I, I mean, I was wrecked. And the funeral industry wasn't there to hold my hand. They were there to tell me what I needed to do, which was more things that I wasn't prepared for. And so I just thought maybe there was another way to do it that was a little kinder and a little more helpful and a little more human. Um, and... It, the way the funeral business is, it's the way it is because we're afraid to have the conversations. So it's sort of like a catch 22 until we have the conversations, the funeral industry really isn't going to change because they don't need to. Yeah. Cause no one's asking them to. Um, so yeah. And one of the best pieces of advice that I got was have the conversation that you're afraid to have with your spouse or your partner and then practice and then talk to your parents and say, I've had this conversation. And so now I want to have it with you. Um, Before they're sick or like while they're transiting? Oh no, now, like you should have, everyone who's actually the over the age of 18 should have their, their, um, their living will. I mean, it's supposed to be done in a doctor's office, believe it or not. There's no national plan for it. There's no okay. national database. Basically, your doctor at 18, it's called a MOLST form, M-O-L-S-T, and it's your last wishes. Wow. It's one's last wishes, which, again, it's a gift. God forbid something happens. You're, you're putting a burden on a spouse. You're putting a burden on a child to make decisions that you had the ability to write out and... That's, that's really what should be done. Hey everyone, at The Fullest, we believe that sustainability and health coexist. And the best place to start making the switch is by starting with your cleaning products. Cleaning products are a really easy switch to make and they're relatively low cost. And they're actually one of the leading causes of toxic chemical exposure. So right now, as we speak, you might have these toxic chemical filled products right under your countertops and these products are detrimental to your health, to the health of your children, to pets, and anyone else in your home. 
this is the easiest way to make the switch to a healthier lifestyle. So I'm a huge advocate. I did it personally 12 years ago. I've never looked back and I'm really, really excited to partner with a company called Clean Coal, which creates effective, chemical-free, coconut-based cleaning products and they are delivered right to your home. So it's a super easy switch to make. You can get on a subscription. You don't even have to think about it. And we're really happy because we get to bring you guys 25% off by using code the fullest at checkout. So make the switch. I promise you won't regret it. And tell us what you think. They should be teaching people this in school. Like, you know, people have to seek this information out. This should just be something that we do. But again, we don't want to talk about death in our society. So I guess that's why. Yeah, it's like paying your taxes or like doing something you don't want to do. You feel so good once you've done it. You're like, what was the big deal? Like, you know, what was the big deal? And the problem is when you don't want to talk about it. My dad never wanted to talk about it. My mother was like, I used to call her like a death bully. She's like, we're doing this. We're doing that. I'm like, what's weird? Why can't he speak up? And I wasn't educated. I didn't understand And so he was kind of like went along with the plan that my mother set for them. And it really wasn't what he wanted. And so I live with the guilt. So having the conversation just clears the pathways for everyone being on the same page. It's going to happen anyway. It's not going to not happen. And you're also not going to, something bad isn't going to happen because you talk about it. There's, there's a joke in the funeral Instagram world. Like just because you talk about getting, having sex doesn't make you get pregnant. Just because you talk about your plans doesn't, isn't going to jinx you. Yeah. Knock wood. (laughs) But he likes to do it. And I'll have the conversation with my friends and they'll say to me, well, what do you want? I'm like, I don't want to talk about it, but it's like, it's the same thing. It's the cobbler's old shoes. Like you don't want to talk about it because you think it's going to make you make it real. Yeah. I know that's true. You don't want to bring it up, but, but then like you said, once you do, then it feels good. So w- your father passed away before your mother. Mm-hmm. So once your mother passed away, had you by then, um, you know, spoke to her, you had spoken to her about what she wants or even then she kind of didn't want to. She, she was very clear about what she wanted and, um, it, it made it easier. I mean, she definitely wanted to be cremated when I was in mortuary school. I learned she was a, she was a realist, which realists are great with death because they're, 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 they're just, they're not emotional about it. And when I was in school, my mother had said she wanted to donate her body to science, which is an alter, which is a way to go if someone um, A, feels that they have something to give and B, it's um, cost effective because you don't have to pay anything. In, in lieu of donating one's body, they do, they work on them in medical schools and then the, the remainder of is cremated. So when I was in Um, mortuary school I called my mother I was like oh my gosh I realized like after you donate your body like whatever's left they'll cremate and they'll give it to me and she said oh yeah I knew that I signed the form I told them just to do whatever they want I was like mother (laughs) where do I get like a chance to have you I want you yeah so she's like the perfect student she's like the perfect one she did what she did she had her plan and there was no question um but yeah, other people who don't want to talk about it, it ends up affecting the living. It's I, I just talked to someone today whose father I've been speaking with, and the daughter finally called me and she said, my dad's so anxious and he's afraid of what's going to happen to his body and he's worried. And I said to her, I said, um, we went over everything. I said, and, and have you th- maybe you could thank your dad like for doing this for you. Like, oh, I haven't said that yet. I said, well, he's giving you a huge gift. You think this is a burden now. Imagine, God forbid, the morning he dies and you're having this conversation. You, you, your head wouldn't even be in the game right now. Yeah. Now we're having a conversation. You're taking notes. You're writing things down. You understand the process. And we'll just put that into play. He's 92 years old when the time comes. 
and thank him. Say, you've taken a huge burden. I'm going to be grieving, and now I don't have to be grieving and figuring out who's going to do this for the least amount of money in the most effective way. You've taken that off the table for me. So she was really like, I'm going to bring that up with him. And she texted me today. She's like, I talked to my dad, and he's so much clearer, and thank you so much. And so that makes me feel good. Yeah, that's nice. So I want to hear a little bit more about what you guys offer at Down to Earth. And like, also just learning about just the industry. Gosh, so many things. Like, what is it that someone has to decide happens to their body? You know, like, what are the decisions that they have to make? And, um, and also, yeah, like what traditionally people do at Mm-hmm. maybe better for the earth every religion has a history most most religions have a history i'm jewish and um the jews have a way of doing it which i think is amazing they bury within they try to bury within 24 hours um it's a plain pine box which means you came in with nothing you leave you with nothing or you came in the same as everyone and you leave, everyone leaves the same, which is beautiful. Um, Rituals at a time of death are just something that ground you and give you something. It's a game plan. Um, If you're not, if you don't have a set religion or your family isn't religious, you can make your own rituals up. Um, A friend of mine has a mom, his mom is 85 and he's an only child and he didn't grow up with a dad and he's, he's as worried about her and she's as worried about him. And I sat down with her and I said, why don't you, could you maybe write out a plan for your son for the first five days? Like just give him a, give him a bullet point things of things he could do for five days. Like go to central park with a bottle of champagne and five of his friends and talk about you or go to a yoga class, but give him a roadmap because it's the same as birth. You you need a plan. You need to know what's going to happen. And the same with a doula. Um, I had a doula with my second child and she told me women aren't afraid of giving birth. They just want to know what happens, what's going to happen next. And that's what a doula does in life and in death. They tell you what is going to happen next. And I think with death and in the funeral business, they've kind of mixed it all up. So you don't know. And then you don't want to ask, so you just give them a check and it all goes away. But the point is that people don't really have any kind of satisfaction after a funeral. And I don't think people mind spending money on a funeral. They just aren't getting anything in return. There's no customer satisfaction. And right before COVID happened, I um, helped a friend of mine's father-in-law I helped a friend of mine bury her father-in-law and he was 90. He had just turned 91. Um, and his wife had died 15 years earlier and they were Italian and they had a traditional wake at a funeral home here in New York. And then she was uh, ship uh, flown to Italy to the town that they're from and buried in a crypt there. So the same thing was going to happen to the father, except for my yoga mommy friend, which it's all about the yoga mommies who rule the world. (laughs) And she said, I think I can pull this off. I think I can get the family to do something different. And I was like, look, I know my market. I know what an Italian Catholic family wants and needs. And she said, no, I think I can pull it off. Um, So he passed away. Um, He had to be embalmed because he was being shipped to Italy. And so there's laws that are involved with that. We ended up having a wake slash funeral in his home in Queens where he had lived for 50 years. Um, It was all legal. You can bring the body back to the house as long as I'm there because I'm a public health official. As long as I accompany the body, it's legal to do a funeral anywhere. You can have a funeral in a bodega. Um, and it was a wake slash funeral. We had valet parking, we had Prosecco and beer, anything that you would have at a Italian bar at five o'clock in the afternoon. And 
what I learned from this experience is that you can be two things at one time. You can be happy and sad at the same time. Just because something sad's happening doesn't mean you have to be sad. And it was like a cocktail party. Like, yes, he was 90. He, you know, it was age appropriate, but he, it took place in the home that he loved. And at the end, someone came up to my friend and said, I don't know if I can say this or if this is right, but this is the best wake I've ever been to. <laughs> because it wasn't, it was sad because it was sad, but it wasn't sad because people were in a sad funeral home with smelly carpet and walking up and paying their respects. The body was there. People had their personal moments with the casket if they wanted to, or they just were in the other room having a conversation. And then we had a full service with the priest and that was, that was it. And then we shipped him to Italy and they had another service there. So I guess to answer your question is you can ask questions. You can, you can, you can say what you want. I always say people to people, families, tell me what you want and I'll tell you if you can do it, not the other way around, which is, this is what you can do. And that's what you know, not options. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share with you about natural wine and I've been learning more and more about it lately because we've been working with a company called Primal Wine and I absolutely love what I've learned with working with them because they are really here to share with us the beautiful natural aspect of what wine really was intended to be. And I learned from them that conventional wine actually uses lab grown yeast and synthetic antimicrobials and even aerate their wine using gas injection at times. And I knew from that moment that I did not want to put that in my body. And what I also love about natural wine is the fact that they take into account cultural and philosophical methods when it comes to bringing us this beverage that really has respect for the environment. And it takes us back to the area where the grapes are grown. So I've been really excited because I signed up for Primal Wines Wine Club, where they basically guide you along the way, they curate the natural wine, and you get to learn something new. So I wanted to share this with you guys because we've partnered with them and we're offering free shipping when you sign up for their wine club. And it's a great way to do something for yourself or with a family member and really have some fun learning something new. So take the time, sign up, and tell us what you think. Use code the fullest at checkout and go to their website, primalwine.com. I noticed that you have a space, maybe it's your space that you're at right now, but you have a space in East Hampton that you um, offer for families, like for to do those sorts of things, to have meditation maybe together or do yoga. Or, so tell me more about that because it just sounded so nice and just a different <laughs> way to celebrate someone's life. Um. So what happened was I wanted to create events around funerals. I wanted to have yoga classes, have meditation classes. What I learned from my parents' death is that the first five days after someone passes away are the most emotional. And to just do the party planning side of it wasn't enough for me. I really wanted to be there for the, we call it, it's called in the industry, the first call. The first call is the first call. Someone's passed away. And I wanted to be there for that. Um, when I was in mortuary school in New York, they called me and they said, well, you just want to be a party planner. So why don't you just hook up with a local funeral home and tell them you want to do the events. And I said, no, thank you. I, I want to, do the whole thing. I don't want people to have to find the funeral home and then find the party planner. So I can do everything. So to answer your question, I have a menu on my website of a yoga class, a family retreat. Um, there's, you can do anything just like you have like your birthday party, you can have a funeral and I can take care of the legalities of the body, which are, disposition which includes transfer of the body to the funeral home 
and um, getting the necessary paperwork for the burial or cremation and um, having the death certificate sent to the family. So those are things that I went to school for and I'm licensed for that are legal. And then the other side of it is, you know, having a yoga class or spending, instead of spending thousands of dollars for a funeral, you could go away for the weekend with your family and, you know, have a guided retreat that sends you back kind of feeling like that was worth the money. <laughs> so do you, think yeah, that more people, I and mean, this is like a random question, but do you think that more people are starting to want to cremate versus, um, do burials or like, um, yeah. What makes someone decide one or the other? So cremation, I always say people say they want to be cremated. I don't believe anybody wants to be cremated. I think it's a lesser evil of the administrative uh, duties of being buried, which is finding a burial plot, which is a separate funeral directors don't sell cemetery plots. We coordinate with them, but we don't represent them. We don't, we don't sell cemetery plots. I think people say they want to be cremated because it's the back, the fallback. Um, there's so many options now. There's uh, water cremation, which is alkaline hydrolysis, which is a flameless cremation. It's uh, not legal in New York. Why I haven't said when. Why not? Because um, it's an old fashioned, I mean, the center it's it's some we're not that progressive california it's legal in california um uh washington state just passed human decomposition where you are put in soil and wood chips and you become soil like they do for animals wow um Legal in Washington state it's going going to start in about a maybe less than a year it's called re um, Katrina Spade is an architect and worked with scientists and you just go back to soil and you get like a soil, you get soil and that's what your family can either choose to be, have it put in a forest or take a small portion or take the whole thing. That's incredible. Um, it's incredible. Yeah. There's a lot of options and, and in New York state, what we have is green burial, which there are a number of green cemeteries where you don't have to, you don't have to even be buried in a casket. You can be wrapped in a shroud um, and placed in the ground and it's not six feet deep. It's three feet deep. So you can, um, the decomposition can take place more towards the top of the soil. Um, so there are options. They're more expensive than a cremation. That's that's why people are cremated. Uh, it's it, and these are questions that people really don't want to ask. You know, just like with beauty, uh, like we like lipstick, but we don't want to ask what's in it. So we were yeah. until someone came and said, "Don't wear it anymore." Yeah. <laughs> I love it though, because, well, okay. So I want to ask you this, does someone, if let's say someone wants to write their living will. And so they go to their doctor, their doctor knows what to ask them, but does their doctor know what to ask in terms of the af the, like this portion of it, or just would I say, okay, I'm going to call Caroline because I want Caroline to give me all the options so that I know what I want included in it. How mm -hmm. does that work? Um, it's called pre-plan. You can, anyone can do a pre-plan. It's, um, it's, it's a third party that keeps the money and it's not put in, it's put in a trust account. It makes interest. Um, everyone should have it because everyone's going to die. Uh, and it's, it's in a trust account. And then we go over what your wishes are and, it's kept in a file and all of your wishes will come true. It's separate from a living will. A living will is what you want in terms of medical intervention. 
after that, it's a different, there's the before and there's the after. And people literally call all the time and say, well, I have power of attorney. And what people don't understand is power of attorney ends at death. So after death, it's called an agent. So if you, let's say you're one of three siblings and your parents are getting older and your parents can sign a form, which you can find online. I know from New York State, you can just Google New York State um, appointing of agent for death decisions and you'll get a form. And that will, the what happens is when a person dies, it's called the next of kin and starts with spouse, spouse or a domestic partner, children over 18, siblings, an agent with a very simple form that doesn't even need to be notarized supersedes everyone. So if you appoint an agent for your disposition, they are the person in charge. There's no, there's no question. So if you don't do a pre-plan, if you don't set up the money part, at least appoint an agent who's in charge. It, it will be the spouse if by default, if you're married and, and that's who it is. But um, yeah, an agent form is like today, this woman I spoke to has two siblings. So there's no, there's no hierarchy when, when a funeral is, decisions are being made. So if she's the agent, I only deal with her. She and her father speak about what his wishes are and she follows through with them. Are um, in the Persian tradition, mm -hmm. it's very similar. Where I, it's not twenty four hours, but you have to get buried within, I think, like a few days. It's with something like that. Maybe it's forty eight hours. Um, but I think it's interesting because other cultures, or just you know, here in America if people, let's say siblings don't get along with a decision, like how far can they extend it to? And what's it like for you dealing with that? If, because they don't, might not have an agent. It's again, one of the unspoken rules that don't come up until they come up. It's sort of, if someone, if a family hasn't spoken about it, then the indecision making between siblings will be a symptom of a bigger problem. So again, it starts with a conversation. It starts with giving the gift to your children of not having to deal with this. You have enough it's going on. It's like the thing when people say, Oh, we want to be surprised about what the sex of the baby is. It's like, there's enough surprises. <laughs> like, like I wanted to know what color, everything I wanted to know. Like I wanted to plan as much as I could control. I wanted to control. This is sort of the same thing. It's the flip side. You want to have as much as you can. That's not the unknown written down and organized. Um, and again, the way to bring it up to parents is to say, this is, you're giving me this gift. I'm a freelancer. I have to go back to work. <laughs> You know, in a few days, I can't call in sick and get over this. I can't call in sick and spend hours and hours researching a funeral home or what it means to have a funeral. This is this. I have enough going on. I'm grieving. Just take the paperwork and the guesswork out of it. And it's so obvious. But again, it's a conversation people don't like having. They don't feel comfortable. The living will is with a lawyer. Mm -hmm. It's called a most form, M-O-L-S-T, which is a detailed articulation of your medical wishes that a doctor, your doctor knows about. The living will, the problem with the living will is it's about the person who's in possession of the living will. So God forbid something happens and a husband has a living will but says, Oh, I'm going to pretend I don't have this. I I want to put my wife on life support. They they they're the person who is in possession of it. A most form M O L S T is something your doctor has. And the doctor can enforce that over the living will. Okay, that makes It's really about who, who enforces it because people can have plans and then people can say, "No." Do it. 
Okay, that makes sense. So, so what and again, it comes from this. It comes from who can be adamant enough to say, this is what I want. But you got to turn it around and say, God forbid something happens. I don't want my family to suffer. I want my family to know that I had clear choices. They don't have to second guess what I wanted. They don't have to think about me and what my wishes are. They, they have it all written out and they're going to be sad enough. So let's give them this gift of knowledge. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes so sense. are you, do you like, tell me more about down to earth. And so you can only do that in New York state. You can only offer your services in New York state. Yes, I can only, I'm a licensed funeral director in New York state. I can advise people in other states. I, I, I'm, I, I talk to people all, all day long and, and whether it's a case that I'm doing or a friend of a friend who needs advice, um, it's, it's really sort of my mission to try to help people. So I am licensed in New York state. Are you, or since you are in New York, what has it been like during coronavirus for you um, and your, your career? Have you been working with people that have been affected by it or is it kind of normal it, people that know about you, you know, and are using your services? Have any of them been affected by it and used it or is it business as usual? Um, both. I mean, I've had family that I've been referred to who have family who've passed away from coronavirus. Um, I would say in March when it hit, I can't even remember what month it was now. My phone rang like, off, like, like did not stop ringing. And I can still hear the sound of that phone. I can change my ringtone because it was so sad. It was so eerie. It was just tragedy. It wasn't, it wasn't a timely tragedy. It was um, and was it people who were planning because they were so afraid or was it people who, you know, had a loved one that passed away? It was people who had a loved one who passed away. Um, no one who had no one who had a plan uh, came to me. Did you hear an echo? An echo? COVID was really was really sad. It was really sad. It was a lot of people who said goodbye to their loved ones and then were not allowed in the hospital. Um, there was no there was no viewing in the hospital. Um, it was, it was, it was an unspoken, it was an, a tragedy that there's no, there was no, there's no words for it. There's no, nothing to compare it to. Um, I feel like the people who lost people to COVID are sort of part of a club that only we can understand what they went through. It's like an unspoken sadness yeah. that. It was unbelievable. Um, and I'm still in touch with a lot of people because they didn't get to say goodbye. I was their bridge. Like I was the only person who had contact with their loved one remains. And I tried my best to sort of ease their, you know, usually we don't send photos of deceased for a lot of reasons. And I, made sure I tried my best to always send a photo to make sure that they knew that they were cared for and that, um, you know, it, it was sort of, I was like their bridge. It was, it was sad, but we did a couple of really amazing zoom memorials, which I have to say are not the same as being in touch, but just like through everything else we've learned through this pandemic, it's really about what you're feeling and that comes through whether you're having, you know, a in-person memorial or a Zoom memorial. And um, we've done quite a few and they're really, really incredible. A friend of mine who awesome. 
I had like this weird falling out with before COVID called me during COVID and she said, how are you doing? Are you so busy? I'm so sorry. We had a falling out. Is there anything I can do for you? And I was like, your biggest nightmare. I was like, actually, yes. I was like, do you want to help me do a zoom funeral? (laughs) She's like, what? I'm like, will you help me arrange this? You're so good at technology and I'm not. And it was the, and she did it. And it was like, she had the best. I knew she would. I knew she would get something out of it because it was such an incredible family and they had this incredible service. And she did all the, she did a playlist. She did a Spotify p- playlist with hymns. She had a program. Everyone was dressed up. It was, it was incredible. And it's hard to tell families uh-huh. that this is a replacement for the real thing, but after they did it, they realized there was connection and there was a little bit of closure and there was an honoring of someone that couldn't be honored the way they wanted to, but it was the way they needed it to be at that moment. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm so happy we were able to connect <laughs> and I was able to learn more about, you know, just the steps to take when you, when you are planning on your transition, because like you said, we're all going to transition and it's just a matter of time and being prepared as, as a gift to others. So I just really appreciate what you're doing. And I, I think it's so important to have this conversation. So thank you for reaching out for sharing about what you're doing and sharing it with all of us. I, I am really inspired by you. Oh, thank you. You You have to take the words and push them out of your mouth and say to your parents or say to your spouse, what do you want to do? What do you want me to do when you die? And then then it's up to them. Like push it out of your mouth and see what comes back. Just throw it out there and you will see how everyone just the elephants out of the room and you'll see magnificent things happen and you'll see ease and honesty and a game plan for the worst time of your life. So I can't, I'm totally <laughs> going to do it. I want to hear back. I really do. I think it's, I think it's something. I think if everyone did it, it would just be one more thing off their list. So, yeah. So. Oh, we'll have a wonderful time with your family. Thank you. I can't wait to chat again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. If you're a regular listener of The Fullest Podcast or a reader at thefullest.com, then you probably know I'm really passionate about living a non-toxic lifestyle. And this includes not just what I put in or on my body, it also extends to the products that I use in my home. And traditional home scenting products just mask odors using chemicals and synthetic fragrances, which can be super harmful to breathe in on a daily basis. So I'm super happy and excited to announce our recent partnership with Vitruvi, a brand that creates beautiful diffusers and non-toxic essential oils naturally and safely scenting your space. Unlike most diffusers, Vitruvi diffusers are crafted using the highest quality porcelain. They're gorgeous and they double as sophisticated pieces of decor in your home. Vitruvi also blends unique aromas to help you set the mood as well. So I'm really excited that they're offering fullest listeners and readers 20% off. All you have to do is go to their website and use code the fullest at checkout and you get your 20% off for first time order. So let me know what you think. Check them out. I'm really, really passionate about using aromatherapy when you're stressed out, when you're feeling bummed or just need something to light up your day. It's really, really powerful and it makes you just feel great. So let me know what you think. 20% off using code the fullest. I'm really excited to be offering this to you guys. Thanks so much.